I know I have done Crayola washable watercolors on this channel quite a few times, actually. Um, and we're taking a look at the large 24 set today. You can pick these up much cheaper in person than I could on Amazon. And I have another set to give away. So they come in individual trays. And let's see if we can pop a color out. Because I know with some of these you can replace. No, it doesn't seem like you can. Actually, you can pop the whole cake out, but I was hoping it would be in little trays that you could pop out. But it makes sense that you cannot. Oh, look at that. And they kind of look like candies, which isn't really a surprise. It comes with a, I would assume this is, and that's a terrible brush. At least it's not those stiff plastic bristles, but look how bluntly that's cut. Let's see if we can get it to come to a point. Not at all. We're not gonna be using that brush today. Fear not. We're going to use a soft Blickmaster squirrel brush instead. And we're going to activate all of our pans and do a little swatching. So already one of the problems with this thing is it doesn't want to stay open. However, you know how I'm always talking about using scrap plastic as a mixing surface? We have a nice large scrap plastic mixing surface. Um, these paints did kick up some dust in transit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe all that paint dust off. And that way when I mix colors on this, I'll get true colors or at least as true as these will allow and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some water on each pan, give it a chance to sort of activate these colors so that we can get an accurate reading with swatching. And I may actually switch over to a larger piece of watercolor paper. Right now I have out my Fluid Easy Block, but I may need to switch over to something bigger so I can do an opacity test as well, since there are a lot of pastels in here. And the way you get pastels in watercolor is you either add more water or you add white slash optical brighteners. So I'll just go ahead and grab that. wipe this down and I need to find something to hold it down for me. Maybe like this. And let's see. We want something that will be waterproof when dry. And sometimes I use black magic and sometimes I just use a Sharpie since we're not doing any archival testing. So I grabbed Strathmore watercolor paper. This is a cellulose based watercolor paper. Ooh, all right. And I've seen a few artists use these for more polished work. So I was like, maybe I ha just haven't, <laughs> maybe I'm just going about this all wrong. So I thought I'd give it another try. I need to do smaller swatches. But I really wanted to warn you guys, based on my experiences painting with these, not only as a kid, but as an adult artist who is used to adult uh, professional grade watercolor paints, these are not really um, a correlate, correlative. These are not really going to handle the way professional or even student grade watercolors are going to handle. These are full of glycerin, they're dye based. Um, they are very prone to lifting and reactivating in my experience. And this set might be different because this is the top row are the colors I'm used to from a Crayola set. The rest are kind of new to me. So I can't vouch for how all the colors will handle. Ooh. I say, ugh, because it picked up like half the pan with it. But these are not really a one-to-one -one, or even close to a one-to-one -one with professional or even student grade watercolors. And I'm gonna show you guys in a minute just how 
gross and murky these have made my water because it's they're full of optical brighteners and the problem with optical brighteners as i've mentioned in a few of my other videos is um it's like chalk it's like talc it's really designed to make the colors pop but it makes them harder to get true good mixes harder harder to get accurate color you aren't going to be able to layer the way you would so my water is already a hot mess. All right, so I have a black line. I have multiple black lines drawn on the paper. I'm gonna explain the opacity test for you guys. Now, there are watercolor water, uh, watercolor colors that are naturally opaque, um, such as yellow ochre. A lot of the natural earth pigments are somewhat opaque and that can make layering a little weird. So you have to kind of have an order of operations when you're handling your watercolors and sort of stick to that for best results. However, with inexpensive sets like this, like I said, they'll add optical brighteners to make them pop off the paper. We draw these lines so we can glaze over the lines and see how opaque the colors are and that'll allow us to judge how we're going to proceed handling these watercolors and how we're going to think about layering, glazing, whether or not we can do washes as we proceed on to the image. And you guys can probably see there's a fair amount of gray sediment in my brush and that isn't just from this gray paint. And you guys can also see just how gray and nasty that water is. So before I proceed on with my field test, I'm gonna let this dry and go dump out that water. So most of these colors have dried. As you guys can see, they're fairly glossy and that is from the glycerin. Glycerin is used with these kind of watercolors because in conjunction with using dyes, it makes it very washable, easy for it to come out. Unfortunately, glycerin, and I'll show you guys, is very easy to not only reactivate, but it also lifts up from the area. Now, if you go into this knowing that and you're prepared for that, that's one thing. But if you are trying to use these um, as a replacement, let's say, for your other watercolors, that's definitely something to keep in mind. And I do know that most serious slash serious student watercolorists are not going to use these paints expecting them to behave like professional grade paints and most child, child artists children artists are not going to use these paints expecting them to behave like professional grade paints so i i am aware of that i don't think you guys are fools but i also think it's just kind of fun to test these and see what they're capable of because sometimes you find out really exciting things you learn a lot about how the product handles Okay, so let's get crack a lacking. I am going to try to hand I'm gonna try to handle these kind of like I handled those banyo watercolors and I'm going to try and leave plenty of utilize the white of the paper, leave plenty of space. And of course these are gonna leave kind of a, a film over the inks. So I may, if I were doing this for something a little nicer, I would um, need to re-ink it. And I am painting on Canson's bulk watercolor paper. So this is 90 pound watercolor paper. I would, I would even hesitate to call it watercolor paper. It's basically cardstock that has been embossed with a watercolor texture. And part of the reason for that is it helps me save on, uh, operating costs would be a good way to phrase it. It helps me save on operating costs. Let's try and blend this a little bit. But it's also similar to what a lot of people who might be using this set for more serious art might have accessible to them. So it's a little less heavy than say Canson XL, which is 140 pound usually. All right, now that that has dried, I'm going to try and go in 
and maybe get it a little bit more saturated or at least a little bit darker. So I wanna grab one of our browns and I have a couple of options. I have this and I have this over here. I'm gonna try with this, we'll see. It's like painting with soap. <gasps> And if you can make this your daily driver, I have respect for your ability to wrangle art supplies because it's kind of like painting with a soapy gouache. Except if you make mistakes, you just have to make make peace with your life, make peace with your bad choices like I'm having to do. Now, something you're definitely going to want to consider, and I feel, I feel bad even mentioning this, because I feel like you guys know better, but I do see a lot of people on Instagram using these, um, and I have to wonder, but if it's for commission art, please don't use these. They're dye base, they're glycerin, they're gonna yellow, glycerin yellows over time, dye fades over time, and I mean quickly, like, matter of weeks will fade. So um, for those of you who use these for say brush lettering, please don't don't sell your finished pieces made with these because they're not going to last the test of time and whoever paid you paid you in good faith and they expect you to know the materials you're using. I'm gonna try something that might ruin this. We'll find out. I'm gonna treat this kind of like gouache. I've already been painting kind of heavy with it. And I feel like treating this set like wash works a lot better than treating it like watercolor. So I've got a color that I mixed to be in between the two colors we've got on Kara's face. Honestly, that might be the best way to use these is like wash and these might be a good way to sort of get used to how gouache might handle. I know a lot of, at least a lot of people I knew when I was in grad school at SCAD had kind of, they would try to use gouache because it's like, oh gouache, how cool. Um, and then really struggle with it. And that is totally myself included. So maybe this is like a good inexpensive way to sort of figure out if gouache would be a good tool for you. Because I am definitely for art supplies that help you figure out what works and what doesn't. Oh, that is definitely not Kara's normal skin tone now. And it's also, it's like shiny wet, but it's not like wet, wet. Um, the way like watercolors will be like pooled on the paper, this is just kind of shiny. So I almost feel like I could go in and paint adjacent areas without there being a huge transfer of color. Now that that layer has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna grab uh, grab some of this light blue. And I don't really want that much light blue, but this much light blue might work. I'm also going to try and paint some blush on her cheeks, but that might not work out too well. We'll see. I'm sure the big, the color is a big part of it, but it honestly feels kind of like painting with bubble gum. I'll try blending it a little bit. I don't want to blend too much because I'm not trying to lift up all the adjacent color. I'm just trying to get this color sort of better, better mixed into the area basically. really feels kind of gross to paint with. So for her hair, we don't have a whole lot of options. We have this brown here and we have black that we can mix in with it. And this brown, in case you guys can't tell, is not a very dark brown. It's the same brown that's in the eight color set. And the dark brown definitely feels like painting with soap. 
as well. <laughs> you guys can see how patchy that brown dried. Now, if I was going to, if I was going for like a look, like if that was my, the style I was going for, I could make it work like, I feel like, I feel like it's not a good look, but maybe you could do something about it kind of look. Now, I think I'm gonna overcomplicate things and use this red violet mixed with the skin tone and the browner skin tone to do some shading on her skin and we'll see how that works. This very, very soft floppy squirrel brush was actually a really good choice because it's not scraping up the pigment, or rather the paint. It's not scraping up the paint. And it's just wet enough, so it was actually kind of a wise decision. And if you were gonna use these to maybe sort of practice getting used to some of the things you would need to be able to do with gouache, then I would recommend a very soft brush, like a squirrel brush. Hmm, mm hmm, That purple might have been a bad choice, but it's okay. We're here to learn today. And I'm definitely handling this differently than I normally do. It seems that I can kind of tone it down by going over it with uh, that sort of brownish skin tone color and our peachy skin tone color. So I'll try to do that. Very similar in that regard to those Banyo watercolors I reviewed recently. It's kind of my approach, in fact, for this whole thing has been like, how did, what did I do for the Banyo, Banyo set? What worked for that? and then just trying to replicate what I learned from that review here in this demonstration. And grab, actually I want the darker blue, I think. I know, it looks so weird. <laughs> it looks so weird to me too. All right, so that blue dried a little more intense than I wanted, so I'm just going to go ahead and try and blend some of that out. Plus it makes her teeth look super weird. And I am not going to use anything like Copic Opaque White or White Gouache to sort of fix these colors. I'm just going to kind of go with them as they are and deal with it. So we're picking up some of that weird beigey brown, bougie brown, beigey brown, mixing it with the darker brown, that unimpressive darker brown, trying to get a freckle color, we'll see. I know I made like a real hot mess there with her skin tone. Okay, so looking up close, you guys can also see some resist where it's like patchy because um, the paint didn't want to layer over that. So I think if you ap apply paint too thickly, you'll start to get a resist there. Let's do the dark brown with some black. And I'm gonna try to mix up a lot so I can get a decently consistent color. And maybe that's also my problem. Maybe I shouldn't worry about getting a consistent color and I should just go with it. Mix as I go. That's always been a problem for me. When I did acrylic painting, uh, I was, oh, it's not gonna go, be thick enough. Um, I wasn't one of the, I wanted to always mix in large batches so that I'd have a consistent color. And of course my paint would dry on me because we were painting these four foot by four foot monstrosities that I just threw away after. Cause like, what are you gonna do with a four foot by four foot painting? Other than I guess try to sell it to like a hotel or something. And of course I A, couldn't mix enough paint. Oh my gosh, that was such a money sink. He didn't recommend, he didn't even tell us about buying acrylic paint in like buckets. And I don't know if that wasn't like a thing. It's a thing now. You can do buy nice artist grade acrylic paint 
by the bucket. You can do a layer of acrylic spray paint first. There's so many options, as I found out later, that our professor didn't introduce to us. So most of us were buying these tiny little tubes of paint from like Michael's paying 10 bucks a tube. And we were buying multiples of each color per four foot painting. I mean, that was seriously a money sink. And I know the professor didn't see a dime of it. So I can't understand why he reckon he didn't clue us in that there is better out there. But anyway, I wasn't one of those artists who could mix up what the color I needed as I went. I had to mix it ahead of time and that way I could be sure that I was getting the right color. Now I'm going to try mixing in some orange. Maybe I should have started with orange and brown first. This is, in my opinion, really quite terrible, but I'm glad I'm trying, even if it is a huge fail boat. This is looking so weird to me and not weird in a cute way, but weird in a bad way. Mm. As much as I'm, I've gone on about like, don't use these for professional commissions, please. I do, I have gained a lot of respect for artists who, see how it's pulled over here? For artists who can manage to make these work for them. I bow to your prowess and I wish you'd share your secrets, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to. Can't give everything away, right? So I'm gonna try, it, it's gotten really goopy and soapy at the top. I'm going to try to spread it out. And also maybe the browns are just really terrible. I do have the um, quote unquote educational set. And then I was thinking about also buying the color mixing set. I know so much Crayola, probably too much Crayola. If that is a hundred percent, not your jam and you don't enjoy watching me struggle with these supplies. I completely understand. I am going to try to fix her hair. Try being ever so much the operative word. Some of these colors, like the skin tones, like the only way you can really get them to work is to work with them really thickly. And then some of them, uh, they really only seem to work very thin and you better just be okay with them being very light. And then we have this disaster piece there and her eyes are like in two different directions. That said, it's been fun. Always fun to try and get back to the basics. Basics. When I initially reviewed Crayola, the eight color Crayola washable watercolors, um, and I can actually pull out the image I made for that. I did it as part of the affordable art supply series on natosoup.blogspot.com and I reviewed a lot of Crayola stuff and a lot of stuff from Walmart, Target, Dollar Tree, those sort of places. Sort of places anybody can afford because I get really tired of people acting like they would totally do. First of all, they slam traditional art for being too expensive. And then they're like, but I would totally be good at it if it wasn't so expensive. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go find some, some supplies that anybody can afford. And I'm going to do some reviews and I'm going to figure out how to use them. And Crayola makes some good products and Crayola makes some products that I just would not recommend for anybody who's trying to make specific things. And I still can't change my recommendation for the Crayola washable watercolors. I was kind of hoping having more colors, having a larger set, I wouldn't have to do so much mixing and I could um, sort of just deal with what's in the palette and be able to do more. But I gotta really give kudos to the artists who I've seen online who use these, or at least say they use these, I believe they use these because it's like, dang, my experiences with these have been pretty terrible. And yet you managed to make something really good with it. I, props to you, you are amazing. I'm gonna let her hair fix, uh, hair fix. I'm gonna let her hair dry and then I'm gonna try and fix her skin. So I'm going to leave this in place. 
and just scoot this slightly over. But I can already see that it's drawing pretty patchy, even though I tried to fix it. And that's an interesting effect. It's something uh, good to note, and it will be interesting to see how it fully dries later on. So it looks like it dry. It's not entirely dry. You guys can see a lot of the shiny. And part of the reason it is staying so glossy is there's just a lot of glycerin on the paper here. And we've already talked about what glycerin will do to your watercolors over time. It turns yellow. So not archival. I'm definitely looking forward to getting a hold of, or I have them, to utilizing the Crayola educational ones. Those are the ones with stronger dyes, I think, and seeing how those hold up. I think they have a little less glycerin and a little more color packed in there. So hopefully those are a bit better. Uh, oh, that's right. I was going to try and fix her skin tone, of course. Her hair is still wet so I'm gonna have to be careful but I'm just gonna basically try to cover it maybe clean it up a little bit I don't want to do too too much to it because it's kind of one of those things that the more I try to fix it the worse it's going to look so Just try to have some some discretion, which has never been my strong point. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. We are in the final stretch. <laughs> I am really disappointed that I couldn't I couldn't bend this to my will, but I have a renewed respect for artists who can. So I'm going to mix up a lot of this green, which is turning like, I know you guys can't necessarily see this. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's like the more I activate it, the more it gets kind of orangey, like green gold. And I'm gonna try to get this finished. Finish it up right here. So I still have not crack the Crayola washable Da Vinci code. And I'm kind of frustrated because when I was doing the skin, I was like, oh yeah, I figured it out. I've got this. I now know we just handle this like wash. And now I, and then I did the hair and I was like, oh no, baby, oh no. And maybe the secret is I should use the other set with it. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> For those of you who regularly use Crayola washable watercolors, if there are any of you watching this, I, I don't know if you're watching this video because you like seeing me torture myself and make bad art, or if you're watching this video because you're like, I use those, let me see if she's got anything good to say. And then you were horribly disappointed when I did not have anything good or useful to say, nothing new to add to the conversation. Uh, let me know in the comments or link me better if you have a tutorial or a video and I will plug the heck out of you over on my Twitter and uh, definitely take a look at it and see if I can learn some new things. I'm sure I can learn some new things. We are always in a position to learn gonna put some of this grassy green down in there oh it really is like painting with soap so I have these jelly soaps that I bought from Mimi Bat who is um a local soap maker in the Nashville area and she makes really nice bath products but I have these kids jelly soaps that I picked up from her and I feel like painting with these Crayola watercolors would be like painting with her soaps except her soaps aren't meant to be paint she's not selling those soaps so you'll paint with them and I know also like I think Crayola and I also think some other companies um do like bathtub soaps in this I, I mean bathtub crayons and I'm like I, I mean I remember my mom buying them for my brother and I when we were kids and these feel a lot like that ugh Like 
They're very slick and soapy and they don't blend the way that watercolors really normally would blend and they're just really weird for me to use. And I have a whole, I have a set of 24, um, another set of 24 that I am going to give away. And I want to say, I want to torture another moderately serious watercolor illustrator. So link me to your channel or link me to your Twitter, link me to your portfolio. And uh, hopefully it's mostly watercolor stuff. And I will send you this unopened 24 pack of Crayola washable watercolors. And this isn't a contest. I'm just gonna pick the person who I think I can torture the most. So um, send me your links and I'll get in contact with you. And maybe you'll be ever so lucky as to win a wonderful 24 pack of Crayola washable watercolors. The caveat is you have to make something with them. And it can be really simple. Like I knew this was gonna go poorly. So I went really simple with it. You can do something really simple. You can try something really complex. I don't care. Um, but I want to see you do something with it and I hopefully want to see you suffer because I suffered and I want to feel like I'm not the only person who can't figure these things out. So someone else needs to, oh, needs to volunteer to be tortured. I'm going to try and do some white corrections with the white. Now, usually white is included in watercolor sets to make opaque pastels. There's plenty of opaque pastels in this set. So, uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. Anyway, that was my Crayola 24 color washable set. I totally thought I could conquer the beast. I totally failed at conquering the beast. Um, I really don't like them and they make me want to whine and complain and whinge about how, how bad they are. But maybe the problem is that I just don't know how to deal with them. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me squirm and complain and struggle and make a hot mess on a piece of paper. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.